Hello, I'm Toy Cat, and welcome back to another second channel geography video. This is our episode series where we talk about geography and the world and stuff. And today I wanted to talk about Canada, because did you know Canada is like really big man, like seriously, it's huge. Look at the size of this country. It is the second largest country on earth by land area, and you might think, wow, it must also be the second largest by population because it's got so much land. No, it's not even in the top 10. It's the 39th largest country by population, and this means you get a very interesting skew, and it also means that there are cities on planet earth, quite a few of them, uh, that have a higher population than all of this. And uh, one such example, wow, thank you for asking, is actually Tokyo. This is Tokyo overlaid on a map of Canada. This black area, uh, which obviously in, inside, of, uh, to inside of Japan, has a higher population than this gray area, which is Canada. And uh, if you go by the square kilometerness, uh, there is a 900 times smaller area of uh, the world than Canada is. So Canada is 900 times less densely populated than Tokyo. And although it's not too surprising when you think, yeah, well, Tokyo is a majorly, and the Tokyo metropolitan area is a majorly densely populated area, whereas Canada is Canada. It's an interesting way to start the uh, conversation about, oh yeah, it turns out we have a lot of land on planet Earth, but we don't live evenly across all of it, and even within a nation, it gets really weird and messy quickly. So, uh, first of all though, I always want to point out, like, hey, did you know, uh, North America is actually the second least populated continent, and even though uh, on the internet and in the world, a lot of the world is, like, centered around there, it is less than 5% of the population, and the majority of that uh, lives inside the United States. Uh, so when we take just Canada alone right here, uh, here is a really fun population map that shows that most of the people living in Canada, uh, again, there are actually very densely populated areas that match what you probably expect from Canada. I mean, if we go to, uh, you know, a, a famous city in Canada, I mean, the one we all love to visit, that's right, it's London. London, Canada is, uh, it, again, London is a city that is so famous, people go from all over the world to visit it. Like, it's a, it's a real big city with real great attractions, like the the corner variety market, or um, over here it's got, as you can see, uh, some a, a gold store, or is that a gentleman's club? It could be either of the two. Oh no, it is a it is a gentleman's club in London. People go from all over the world and visit, people fly great distances to visit London. You can fact check me on that one. It is 100% true, uh, because they this is what they picture when they picture Canada. And when you're picturing this part of Canada, when you're seeing the Canada that is represented in the famous TV show Suits, um, but when, when you're seeing these, uh, oh, look at this, the Scots Corner, a British pub and restaurant here in London, of uh, all places, it is the place that you would love to see this. But um, yeah, basically, people come from all over the world to visit uh, London and other cities like it in Canada. Because here's the deal. Uh, Canada does have a bunch of cities, and most of the people live in those cities. In fact, this map shows that it's not even just like, oh yeah, there are, the cities have all the people. It's like, no, very few cities contain all of the people, and then the area between those cities is vaguely populated too. Here is, uh, again, like uh, the population showing that like, yeah, there's a, there's a little bit of population around here. There's a huge amount in the Toronto, it's actually called the London to Quebec City Corridor, I think. Uh, this corridor right here, and then the Maritimes have a bunch of people as well. Uh, and and then there's a little bit on Newfoundland, and then otherwise it's just like, yeah, basically no one lives in the vast majority of it. It just says sparsely populated, which means anything less than 0.4 people per square kilometer. But again, most of this is not 0.4 people per square kilometer, it's zero people per square kilometer. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me show you another fun map. I love this map because it shows each colored area with one quarter of Canada's population. So uh, the Toronto metropolitan area and uh, the surrounding cities, including London, a place very close to my heart, um, that is in red, as you can see. One quarter of Canada lives in just this tiny area, which again is, is not that dissimilar to the uh, size that uh, Tokyo has. It's, it's basically, if you look at this area, it's about like, probably about a quarter less densely populated than uh, Tokyo is, so it's not too bad. Uh, then we've got the rest of the corridor, which is another quarter of the population. Then there's the major cities, which are close to the United States border um, over here on the uh, west coast of Canada, with British Columbia being the largest uh, of the provinces. Then it's Alberta. Then we've got the not too uh, small, uh, not too, yeah, not too small provinces of uh, uh, Saskatchewan and, uh, <laughs> oh, I, I forget the other one. It's um, Win Winnipeg, I want to say. So, like, you got you got the Manitoba, sorry. Winnipeg's the city. So you got those, and that's where a lot of people live. But then if you take these four provinces, all of the Maritimes, you take all of the territories, and all of the population from the majority of the other provinces, you get 
less than 10 million people. This yellow area has less than 10 million people living there, and that sounds really crazy by itself, until again, you cross-reference it with this map and you realize, oh, this is including a lot of population centers. If you actually were to divide it once more, you'd find that, oh, yeah, 90% of this area has less than 10% of its population, because here's the deal. Canada has a lot of area, and no one lives in that area. And so here is the, the premise behind today's video. I want to go look at some of these weird, tiny, remote areas. Because even, uh, I, I heard about a fairly major city in Canada, uh, Thunder Bay recently. If you're curious, I have a couple of Canadian friends. Uh, one of them went on a date with someone from Thunder Bay. And they're like, wow, that's so far away and so uh, isolated. Or well, that's what I said, because I, I comment on people's uh, Tinder dates, uh, places of origins. Also, yeah, this 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 is my thing now. When people, <laughs> I, I've run out of stories to tell about uh, dates I've gone on, and the internet has criticized me enough for that. Now I tell the stories of other people's dates. How about that? How are you gonna react to that comment section? Anyway, so um, this is Thunder Bay, Canada. It's a delightful city. Look at the boundaries, it's like super square, because obviously no one lives here. What does it matter if you say you own it? So with that said, this is Thunder Bay. And it's a really, really, really remote city, even though it's on the Trans-Canada Highway, I want to say it's called. Um, and so if we go from this, it's uh, it's in Ontario. If we go to the biggest city in Ontario, which is, of course, uh, Toronto, you are going to be an hour, a day and 22 hours away by bus. So let's just assume you drive. It's uh, it's only 14 hours and 55 minutes. Or you can drive through America for, for 19 hours. So that's, that's pretty bad. If you wanted to go to the capital of your own country, then that's... Oh, it's actually... It looks like it's not that much further away. And if you wanted to go to the biggest major city, you know, like one that actually has more than 100,000 people, uh, then you go to Winnipeg, which is only seven and a half hours away on the Trans-Canada Highway. Wow, this city uh, is actually so isolated, despite being basically on the direct path between two major cities. This is Winnipeg, this is Toronto. There is a direct road going between them that happens to cross Thunder Bay, and still it is that isolated. And here's the deal, Thunder Bay, according to this, list of the 100 largest population centers in Canada, is actually the 33rd largest population center in Canada. This, this place that seems isolated is actually the bread and butter of Canada's population. There are, you know, 32 places bigger than this, and of the places, you know, the next 67 that are smaller, uh, there's a bunch of people living in these kind of small towns. But if we take away, and, and, if, and in fact, if you look at this very same thing, uh, Statistics Canada says there are 944 population centers in Canada, with 513 of them being in uh, the two most popular provinces, which just goes to show that, like, wow, only 944 population centers in a country this big really helps you understand that, like, oh, yeah, there just aren't population centers in places like this. Like, people, oh, there actually is a road here. Can we, can we street view the road? We can't street view the road. But there is a road here, which is very rare, because Canada's road network is incredibly limited in most places. So here, I, I, here's a really fun map. If you live in a country uh, that is reasonably small, or at the very least just reasonably populated, you're probably used to the idea that you can drive anywhere, right? Like, if you want to drive between, I don't know, the great cities of, of uh, you know, London, uh, for instance, and you want to drive from London uh, to, to Paris, for instance, even though those two places are very far apart, you know you can make that drive. It is 18 hours. Oh my god, uh, on tar Toronto? is almost as close to Thunder Bay as it is to Texas. That is insane. Anyway, so if you want to drive from the great cities of London to Paris, um, you're used to the fact that you can do that. Maybe you have to take a ferry, maybe you have to cross a border, but you can drive there. But no, that is that is non-assumption you can make in Canada. Whereas you can see, the roads just kind of stop in a lot of places. And even though there are roads uh, for all these places, like up here, you might be like, wow, those are some roads that I can drive on, and it will be great if I do so. But if we take an example of like, um, okay, let's, let's go with this super far crazy north road. It's like, oh god. You can see how it's basically just two lanes going through the abyss. Why is this censored? Why can I not see in front of me? <laughs> Was the camera blurry? <laughs> or are they, like this looks like the Google Maps they tried to censor something. Was there a vehicle in front of there or something? I don't know what this is. But yeah, you can see how most of those roads are just like, ah, this is a very long thing going to nowhere. And despite that, and this, this long road going to nowhere is basically the only road for hundreds of miles in either direction. And it's basically nothing, right? So um, yeah, if you, if you live in Chapez in uh, Montreal, you can see uh, delightful places like the sports and community center of Chapez. I can't imagine how cruel, like, in fact, I can imagine how cruel it is to have children in a place like this, that they need a sports and community center. Is that the sports and community center? Oh, that is, right? Oh no, it's all in French, so we can't read it. 
You know, it's just indecipherable. There is no way to- Oh, and there's a Fritz Maison, a menus drivers. Divers? Menu divers? Do we dive for menus? I mean, there's gotta be some of them at the bottom of the sea, I'm sure. But yeah, you can see how like, yeah, this is- this is pretty remote, huh? And they live on one of these major roads. But bear in mind, this is like a major settlement for this part of Canada. If you go further up these minor roads that aren't really connected and aren't real roads, so much so that the Google Street View car won't go on them and they're basically one-track gravel roads, um, then you can start to find even more places like UJ Bugamono, um, which is how you pronounce this. Uh, I do- I took French for four years in school. That is factually correct. I, uh... I, my, my, my French teachers just kept getting offended at how little our class knew and being like, you will learn it. And then no one did and they're like, ah, that did not work the way I thought it did. Trying to, trying to force you to have a conversation on your first day. Apparently just, why can't I see what, <laughs> I want to see what's over here. Also, why is this place a circle? But yeah, you can see how like, oh yeah, Uja Bugumunu uh, has this delightful uh, little uh, church over here. It's got a post office. It's even got a cultural institute. And the, there's houses around here, but like this is this is like truly remote Quebec, right? And let's let's leave this you know the the French speaking part of Canada behind, and let's go into the real Canada, and let's show you how like oh yeah, there are places like Casa Bonica, Casa Bonica, yeah, Casa Bonica, which is over here and is connected solely. Oh, actually, that there might be a road we can follow. No, the road just goes to here and then it stops. Why here, out of interest? Oh, we can't even zoom in that far. What is what is here like? Why, why does the road go here? What What is this? Why does, uh, you know, anyway, so, oh god, it's so weird. <laughs> See, go, trying to even look at Canada this close to the map gets really confusing really quickly. Like, what is the deal with this? I'm sure there's some military reason why it has to be that way, but there are so many settlements like this that are not connected to the world by road in any, in any, in any sense of the word. If we go to Fort Severn, uh, as you can see, it's the same thing. I, I assume this is how, how do people get in and out? Where's the where's the runway? What is any of this actually? But yeah, you can see how there is an inn and there is a First Nations school, and otherwise it's just a bunch of tracks between places. You live here and you have a post office, which, you know, how do they even stop the post office? Because you can vaguely, you know, there are some parts of Canada that are really rural and isolated. Like if we go to uh, the Yukon, and we go to uh, Whitehorse. Whitehorse is the biggest city in the Yukon uh, and the biggest city in all of the territories of Canada. All of this, uh, wait, if we look on the map. All of this has a population uh, so low that none of the cities there fit into the biggest 100 uh, as, as I checked right here. And so that, that that's interesting enough by itself, right? Huh, none of the hundreds largest places are in this thing right here. But even the very largest of all of them, Whitehorse, is like still just like a small little town. I mean, it has the Burnt Toast Cafe. I really wanna to go to the White Horse sometime. I just, or oh, the White Horse. <laughs> I wanna to go to White Horse sometime. It's just one of those like fascinatingly remote places that I just, like Doc's Dinner. It's probably Doc's Diner with a, a, a mistake. Klondike Ribbon Salmon Barbecue. I want some ribbon salmon. Uh, we got the CBIC Banking Center. They've got a Starbucks this far north. See, right, you can't be that remote when you have a Starbucks. But then from White Horse, this not very big population center, you go further up the road and you start to find more and more like, like Destruction Bay. And you're like, oh yeah, they have a gas station. Who, who, but here's my question. Who stocks the gas station? Who works there? Do they drive from the nearest town? When, when places are this level of remote where there is like no houses that I can see nearby, how, how do they work? How does any of this work? And in fact, like, so we go to Burwash Landing, which has a museum and lake skiing. And, uh, or actually let's, let's try and find the nearest like post office. And you realize that like the post office for places like this is incredible. Okay, so when we search for Canada Post, we get this this small area right here in Watson. And you realize that like, yeah, getting, getting even mail sent out to this sort of place involves a huge journey every single day by car. And this is like a well-connected place in the grand scheme of things. Also, is that an Australian flag? What is it doing there? Is that a Ugandan flag next to it? Am I, am I crazy? It could be German, actually. Even if so, German and Australian or German and New Zealand. I get the two mixed up, I'm sorry. I know, I'm terrible. I have all these New Zealand flag shirts, but I can't even look at their flag correctly. But anyway, so like, um, the, uh, the, the, the question uh, that remains from all of this is like, oh, look at that too, Northern Landing Center. It's like, uh, these places are so remote and it makes you realize when we look at more of them, like I, I just wanna do this all day. I wanna spend literally all of your day looking at places like Two Mile Village. Why is it called that? 
Does anyone live here? And just realizing that like, yeah, these are the only places for so far. And they'll have a, and they'll have like a fire department, a Canada post office, that is a universal thing it seems, a petrol station, and that's like it. That is the, that is what happens here. And it's just, it makes you realize that, um, you know, like civilization, I like to describe this in my, uh, my metropolitan elite bubble. The cities are ahead of the rest of the pop. Like, cities are living the future. Things that happen in cities now will happen in the small towns, etc. in 20, 30 years. Or, in some cases, faster than that, if if someone can get it out there. But, like, um, you know, the, the, the more population that is living somewhere... What is that, by the way? Oh, there's two dogs following a man on a bike. Or they're just stray dogs. It's hard to tell which. Is the Google car gonna hit them? This is a this is a riveting tell I need to know the answer to. Oh, no, the, the dogs are running faster than the car. Oh, no, they are following the man. There we go. That's that's cute. Or it's actually a boy in a BMX. Are they chasing the boy on the BMX? They look pretty mad about it, huh? They look. <laughs> that that doesn't look like a. Okay, well they're gone now. They're all gone now, huh? So that's bizarre. Anyway, so that said, um, there is a interesting thing about places like this that you realize that like, oh yeah, when you're living in this lightly populated an area, things are very different. The the expectations and the services you receive and expect, you know, the Starbucks of the world is a great example. You know, if you want coffee, um, I'm gonna make, no, no one defends Starbucks vehemently, so do you want mediocre coffee and and generic snacks served by someone who misspells your name? You don't get that in Mount Slavey Road. That's an interesting, uh, in, in Ross River. You get a few park homes, a giant storage tank for petroleum controls, and uh, you get a post office if you're lucky, and that that's that. Those are the local amenities. Those are the the services that other people can offer you. And so much of Canada is like this, and it makes you realize that like one, how important the post office can be to places like that. But that's a tale everyone talk, talks about all the time. You know, do do those people really need those spam leaflets delivered by 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 air across the country that badly? You know, no, they don't. No one loves the mail that badly. But what people do love. Um, is not getting mail partially, but also it's like, um, you know, again, the very needs that make these people function. The, the thing they rely on from local government, to some extent, is their literal survival. Like, people, people will say that all the time when they're referring to, like, some piece of social legislation, like, oh, if we don't legislate this thing being, uh, you know, okay, then I will literally be killed for my, uh, my beliefs here. Uh, but really, like, there are people, like, not based on like, oh, what they think. And there, there are places that are so on the edge that like, yeah, if we don't get our, our fuel delivery or our orange juice delivered by, I guess orange juice isn't a necessity. You know, these people really like their orange juice. They will literally die if they don't have it. And um, it's crazy to realize just how many places there are like this, right? Like this is Ross River in the Yukon, which actually looks pretty big from the surface. And then we go further up and further up and further up and... Oh god, where have we ended up at right now? Uh, and Fort Good Hope. See, this is a place that has all the hope in the world. Oh, we can't- we literally can't look at it. They have a northern store. A supermarket. Huh. Not much selection for expired Dr. Pepper that's 50% off, but I guess I am in the northern Arctic. Otherwise, the staff are polite. <laughs> see, right, like... <laughs> oh, there's a local guide. I want to see his reviews. Let's see what he's been up to. So he's been, uh... He went to some auto parts, it seems, uh, in Calgary. Honestly, he basically he flew in there. He's not a local. He's a local guide to Calgary, it looks like. Honestly, the term local guide on Google upsets me. You should only be a local guide when you are a guide to the local area. Not when you're a local guide. A local guide to Calgary's opinion on the, on the Northern store is not what I want. I want to hear other reviews, like Dan Podina. Are you a local? You better be a local for Calgary. I mean, sorry for, oh no, he's... He's from America. He's, he's been reviewing Detroit. He's been got. I, I feel like this is weird to look into people's Google Maps review history, but it's one of those things you can do, fun fact. Anyway, so speaking of things you can do, fun fact, let's look around Manitou Island. And let's let's realize that the, the Canada goes even further north than this, with places like Paula Talk. Ah, uh, they've got they've got a, a RCMP. They've got a parking spot, airport parking. I can't see the airport. Oh wow, yeah, the airport is literally not marked on Google Maps. But it has a parking spot that is marked on Google Maps. And that has two reviews. Uh, it's simply packed up, has plenty of space, and allows for convenient drop-off and pick-off at the airport. Well, that's that's fun. This this is great. I, I love I love seeing places like this. Why do they exist? 
They basically don't. And they're surrounded by a whole bunch of nothing. In fact, one of the things I decided to do, just, just for fun here, was like, on this map, they decided to dramatically overlay Tokyo onto Canada. And again, I already made the, made the point that like, yeah, so Tokyo is 900 times more densely populated than Canada as a whole. But what if, we, what if we take the population of Canada that Tokyo is covering in this purely random map that came uh, from Reddit? And so, side note, it came from, uh, since I love this map so much, Brined Fish on Reddit. Um, but the, uh, and as you can see, one million more people live in that area than that area, despite being 915 times larger. Um, but the thing I decided to look into was like, okay, so what is roughly there? And the answer is the Nunavut Lake, like some of these areas right here is what is it, what it is. And if you look around and you try to find something in all of this territory, I could find zero settlements. It is land that I assume the native people live on or sometimes live on. I, again, honestly, what? how did it end up being this size precisely? I don't know. But I could not find a single permanent settlement. There are apparently free buildings there that you can find from satellite view, but there's no on the ground data. Because how would you get the on the ground data? You cannot get to places like this besides on foot. The, the, the area of the map that Tokyo is shown to be on in this delightful map from Brian Fish uh, you cannot physically get to via any of the wonderful things we've invented in, as humans over the last 150 years or going even further back to the horse and carriage. You know, the Romans built roads over Europe, but can Canada and indeed uh, Canadians cannot build roads and infrastructure over the hip because it's just not worth it, basically. Um, but that means that that is how far in the past this place is. There are maybe three people living in the same area as 35.8 million people live and if that doesn't tell you about the relative value of land, I don't know what does. Some people like to believe that all land is created equally. It's not true. Different pieces of land have different temperature, which gives it different requirements. For instance, the uh, the Trans -Ala the Alaskan Highway, I forget what it's called, the, the one that goes north, south to North Alaska. This is a pain to build because there is permafrost. There is There are parts of the ground that are so permanent. Why can't I just, there we go. There, it is so permanently, like it's a real engineering nightmare to build on permanently frozen ground in some places. Uh, it makes it actually harder to build a road here, ignoring the fact that no one lives here because it's harder to live here. Otherwise, it's hard to make things work there. We we as a society are all kind of based in the si same lines of latitude that are somewhere north of by, you know, like 20 degrees of the equator. And like this, this is what I guess European society is. And then nowadays we're seeing a slight shift to again, like more tropical uh, kind of areas. Uh, Tropical is definitely the wrong word, but um, we're seeing a shift in what humans can do in that way. But still, the overwhelming majority of humans build technologies that work in certain ways, and therefore land is created differently. Access to water is a requirement for life in modern day society, or if not water, access to water via a road. Without those two things, you can't have people living somewhere. One of the reasons the United States is, even though the US is pretty um, lowly populated in places like Wyoming, uh, about half a million people live in this area size, which I want to say is larger than like, I don't know, uh, it's la la larger than Estonia. It's definitely larger than a lot of countries actually. Probably larger than Spain. Let's just say, let's go with that and we can fact check me in the comments later. Um, <laughs> but if you look at like this place that has only a half million people living there, the it is still very well connected if we look at the actual roads going through it, because again, uh, the US has done a pretty good job at building out and making its country accessible for the most part. Uh, where where there where there can't be roads, there are airports of essential air service, etc. Like getting around a country is a very hard thing to do. And so Canada has the same struggle, just literally 10 times bigger in terms of population density, and also even harder in terms of the climate is fighting against them. Uh, the Everything is telling them not to make things here, and right now there is no need for the land that is that great. When people say, oh, humans have run out of space and earth, that's why I live in a cramped little box. I, I live in um, what I think uh, Americans call row houses. Uh, I, I live in a terrace house. There are neighbors over here, there are neighbors back there. Um, and I'm moving to a terrace house as well. And you might think, wow, those darn Europeans have no space, or, oh wow, isn't it crazy how we have to live in smaller and smaller boxes? And it's like, well, certain land is worth a lot. The Toronto area, which uh, this map right here says has, oh, in fact, not this map, that according to this has 5 million, 5.4 million people living there. And that's gonna have gone up by 2021. Let's just say 6 million. Let's be, let's be nice and simple, shall we? 6 million people live 
around here. Whereas when you take here, about six people live here. And that, the fact that you can take an area 10 times smaller and say a million times, a million people live in an area that is significantly smaller, helps you understand that the land is only of, as valuable as other people want it to be. And other people is the collective rest of your country and to a wider extent society, uh, the world and society, whatever. But let's not, let's not do that. This is a society. We live in a society thing. Although, did you know, we do in fact live in a society um, and that is why if you want to, and if, if we pick a random suburb, I bet, I bet because Toronto is an old city, it probably does have, uh, row houses like you'd see in, uh, Europe, right? Oh no, look at this. They've got spaces between their houses. Oh, look at this. They are, oh no, here we go. This is like, no, it's even, even the spaces are small here, but they're technically not terrace houses, right? I don't think so. At least like, it's kind of cheating to not call them terrace houses. But they are in fact not, and that that is reality. Uh, these these things are, I bet. Wait, you know, what? wait. We got time. Let's let's do this. These things are, I bet, worth a million Canadian dollars. How much is a million Canadian dollars? Let's find out. Uh, Property.ca. Twenty three Austin. Am I actually? Am I gonna look in some random dudes? Isn't it weird how much you can find out about? Okay, you can't. Fine, sure. I'll just go to Austin Terrace. Uh, I don't know. Canada prices. Oh, I guess I should say Toronto. Let's let's see how much this is worth. Um, because you know I I I've been looking at houses. Now I'm just stop stop giving me these like teasers. Don't don't make me sign in with a free account. I don't want to. I just want to see. Uh, not property.ca. You've 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 broken my heart. Pro oh no, this is a different place. Okay, so this place also makes you log in to see prices. Is that like a a law or something? I just want to go on a. I just want to see. Okay, here we go. This place is is how much? Give me a price. Give me a number. I just want to prove a point to the internet. Damn it. Um, okay, how much does a house in Toronto prices? We'll just get a general thing. Uh, Toronto house price. It costs sixteen thousand dollars for a house in Toronto. That is not factually accurate. I don't think. How much does a house cost in Toronto? Eight hundred eighty-three thousand dollars. Assuming a down payment, or whatever. So you need eight hundred eighty-three thousand Canadian dollars. This is probably a nicer than average house. This is worth a million Canadian dollars. I'm making that estimate. But in, uh, you know, if you take that exact same plot of land and you put it away from all the other people, uh, over, pff, you know, you can pick literally anywhere in Canada and make a good point about this. Whoa, the world is upside down. This is a great, this is a grand point I'm making about perspective right now. If we put that same plot of land right here, I would argue it actually has a negative value because you're paying tax on, you have to pay some form of tax to someone, I'm sure. I don't know how property tax in Canada works, but you're gonna have to like have some legal obligations to that land uh, and you're not going to be able to access it without spending literally days going there. And once you do, how are you gonna get the resources to build a house there? Oh, that's gonna be impossible too. The, the something, the, the same, physical land, even if we ignore the climate situation, um, the same physical land is only worth an amount that other people, like this This is one of the funny things about buying a house that like people hate to admit to themselves. They try to find objective value, but the only thing that something is worth is what other people value it at. The only reason that, uh, ooh, are we going another layer deep on this? The only reason that like, uh, you know, uh, the, the Jeff Bezos's or the uh, Elon Musk of the world are worth so many hundreds of billions of dollars is because they have the voting rights in the companies which people have collectively decided are worth that amount. And that is the exact same mechanism that works for property. If you wanna see a property, the only reason that this property is worth over a million dollars probably, I'm guessing Canadian, which isn't real dollars, but whatever, is because someone else would love to live there that amount. Uh, and therefore, it's not actually worth a million if no one has a million dollars to spend on it. And so there is a valuable lesson about economics mixed in with the remoteness of Canada, maybe. What was the point of this video again? I don't remember. But I do know that Red Fox Run have a heart. Remember to heart this video on your favorite social media accounts because uh, I'm very good at making bit. This, do you see how well edited this video was? You notice how I, uh, I cut out all the bits where I was Googling? I, I am good at making videos. Thank you. For the compliment. Oh, I forgot to even mention. I <laughs> I feel like this is controversial. Let's have fun with it. So, um, one of the few settlements. Okay, let's just go north again. One of the few settlements in Canada, which is very far away from the U.S. border, which is where most people live. Again, here's a map. Is uh, over here, Churchill, Manitoba. 
Um, and Churchill was a place that previously this story of like, oh yeah, uh, there are polar bears there, and like sometimes people get mauled to death by polar bears. It's just a fact of life. I think this is a great way to explain how humans be in another aspect. Because so many people, uh, let's be honest, like people on Twitter that like are upset because they want to imagine a world where they can go and do whatever they want again. And they're like, oh, I'm upset because it feels like other people are doing what they want when it's me who should be doing what I want. And therefore, you know, that people, we would say avoiding the plague, but avoiding it like the plague, but people don't avoid the plague. Ha 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 ha. But it's funny because like people talk about that in relation to, again, a, a, a disease with a blah, 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 blah. You get the point, COVID. But uh, what is much more scary? I think we can all agree, right? That significantly more terrifying than COVID is a polar bear. Wait, can we agree on that? That might be a fun discussion for the comments. I, I think I'm more scared of a polar bear. I mean, I guess, I guess it depends on the distance of both. Like a person, you know, like, I, I guess you could make a fun scenario where it's like, what would you rather be near? Uh, a room, a room filled of a hundred people, 10 of which have COVID or a room filled of a hundred people, one of which is a polar bear. So there is my, would you rather question for the comments. I'm not even gonna make my point anymore. I'm, I'm just, I'm gonna spend all day thinking about that one. But what you can spend all day thinking about is Churchill, Canada, and the fact that <laughs> people just live with the deadly, terrifying animals that can maul them to parts, because you have to when you live there. And uh, realizing what you have to do as humans is a valuable lesson too. And that does not include living in rural Ontario. This is actually like probably accessible land. It's probably only like a few dozen miles from the nearest road. Yeah, Fort Albany's just over there. Let me Let me see how close we are to we are just 87 miles from civilization, or if we want the Trans-Canada Highway, just 117 miles. You could walk that in like a couple weeks, easy. Probably less than, if you really were dedicated, I bet you could do that in one week. You could make your own little house here. I mean, you wouldn't be able to bring supplies. Also, you'd have to cross two rivers. You'd have to build a bridge across the river to bring things over it, right? Yeah, you know, there's so many, there's, I, Canada is the greatest example of how land we claim to have value. Land has value in the sense that, yeah, I guess this, there is some value to the inherent, a place you put things, but the real value is in being where, near where other people have put their things. And I think there's something about that is just so uh, interesting in that we don't think about it because it kind of breaks us and it makes you realize how close to collapse the whole system is the whole time. But I think I'm doing too many like, uh, messages that end with things are scary and collapsey. So how about we instead say, what's more terrifying, COVID or a bear? Let me know in the comments down below, because I'll see you next time. Goodbye.